The French multinational automaker Group Renault, often known as the Renault Group in English, was founded in 1899. In addition to making a variety of automobiles and vans, the business has also produced auto rail vehicles in the past, along with trucks, tractors, tanks, buses, and coaches. In terms of manufacturing volume, Renault was the ninth largest manufacturer in the world in 2016, according to the Organisation Internationale des Constructeurs d'Automobile. The Renault-Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance overtook Toyota as the largest seller of light automobiles in 2017. In today's video, we will share some historical information about Renault. Louis Renault and his brothers Marcel and Fernand established the Renault Corporation on February 25, 1899, under the name Société Renault Frère. Before joining forces with his brothers, who had developed their business acumen working for their father's textile company, Louis was a brilliant, aspirational young engineer who had previously created and built many prototypes. Marcel and Fernand oversaw the company's operations, while Louis handled design and production. After giving him a test drive on December 24, 1898, the Renault Voiturette 1CV, the company's first automobile, was sold to a friend of Louis's father. Renault bought its engines from de Dion Bouton before starting to produce its own in 1903. When the Société des Automobiles de Place purchased Renault AG1 automobiles to start a fleet of taxis in 1905, it was the first significant volume sale. The French military later employed these vehicles to carry troops during World War I, earning them the moniker Taxi de la Marne. By 1907, Renault had produced a sizable portion of the cabs in London and Paris. In 1907 and 1908, Renault was the top-selling foreign brand in New York. The company produced 3,575 units in 1908, making it the nation's largest vehicle producer. The brothers understood the significance of the publicity that taking part in motorsports could bring about for their cars. Renault gained notoriety by winning the first city-to-city -city races organized in Switzerland, which led to a sharp increase in sales. Louis and Marcel also competed in corporate vehicle racing, but Marcel passed away in a crash during the 1903 Paris-Madrid race. Although Louis stopped competing, his firm remained actively involved, with Ferenc Zis driving a Renault AK90CV to victory in the first Grand Prix race in 1906. When Fernand retired due to ill health in 1906, Louis, the lone surviving brother, assumed full management of the business. Fernand passed away in 1909, making Louis the sole proprietor of the business, which he renamed the Renault Automobile Company. From the very beginning, Renault cultivated its reputation for innovation. Cars were luxury goods at the time, produced before the advent of the assembly line. At the time, the smallest Renaults cost 3,000 francs, which is equivalent to 10 years of the average worker's salary. The business introduced mass manufacturing methods in 1905 and tailorism in 1913. Renault paid a visit to Henry Ford at his Highland Park facility in 1911, and he returned with a few production ideas. In the years leading up to World War I, Renault produced buses and commercial freight trucks. The business debuted its first actual commercial truck in 1906. After 1918, Louis Renault broadened the scope of Renault, producing both industrial and agricultural gear. From 1914 through 1918, there were numerous new items produced. Between 1919 and 1930, the Type GP, the original Renault tractor, was created. Based on the FT tank, it was. While issues with the American stock market and the workforce hindered the company's growth, Renault found it difficult to compete with the small, economical people's cars, which are becoming more and more popular. Renault needed to improve the way its automobiles were distributed. Gustave Goudet, a businessman from Amiens, France, and Louis, forged one of their first distribution agreements in 1920. The two currently have a close friendship. The radiator was placed behind the engine in pre-First World War automobiles, resulting in a so-called coal scuttle bonnet. The 1920s saw more of this. All versions didn't have the radiator up front until 1930. In 1925, the bonnet badge's circular design gave way to the enduring and recognizable diamond shape. During the 1950s and 1960s, Automobiles with engines put longitudinally in the back of the vehicle continued to have the radiator mounted behind the engine, up against the firewall. Louis Renault refused to make tanks for Nazi Germany when France submitted in 1940, and his plants were taken over by the Nazis. Renault instead built vehicles while making the Renault UE tank for the Allies. 
the Ile Seguin Billancourt Paris plant was the target of the British Royal Air Force's RAF greatest single target attack during the war on March 3, 1942, when 235 low level bombers were launched against it. The plant and the surrounding area were bombarded with 460 metric tons of bombs, which resulted in significant property damage and numerous human casualties. Renault vowed to restore the factory as soon as possible, but a year later, on April 4th, this time provided by the Americans, as well as on September 3rd and 15th, 1943, bombardments continued. The factory gates of Renault's Billancourt plant reopened at the beginning of September 1944, a few weeks after Paris had been liberated. In a plot and conspiracy-tainted atmosphere, operations only slowly resumed. Under Leon Blum's popular front administration, there had been violent political and industrial unrest in the Billancourt factory in 1936. The rivalry between capitalist collaboration and communist opposition was represented in the political wrangling and violence that followed liberation. Many of the scores were settled before the invasion. The interim administration charged Louis Renault with working with the Germans. Renault was persuaded by his attorneys to appear before a judge in the hysterical climate of those early post-liberation days, which featured many outrageous claims. On September 22, 1944, he appeared before Judge Marcel Martin. On September 23, 1944, he and other prominent French members of the auto industry were both taken into custody. Due to Renault's brutal management of the 1936 to 1938 strikes, no one offered him political support. While awaiting trial, he was detained at Frayne Prison, where he passed away on October 24, 1944, in an undetermined manner. Pierre Le Faucheux oversaw Renault during a period of both commercial resurgence and labor upheaval that would last into the 1980s. At least two Renault models, the Standard Saloon and the Deluxe Saloon, were built in England in the early 1950s. Louis Renault had secretly created the rear engine 4CV during the war, and in 1946, Le Faucheux introduced it. Shortly after, Renault introduced their flagship model, the conventional two-liter four-cylinder Renault Frigate, 1951-1960. The 4CV proved to be a strong competitor for vehicles like the Morris Minor and Volkswagen Beetle, and thanks to more than 500,000 sales, it was manufactured until 1961. Lefacheau oversaw the creation of the 4CV's successor after it was a commercial success, continuing to oppose the post-World War II French Ministry of Industrial Production's plan to transform Renault exclusively into a truck manufacturer. He managed the Dauphine prototype until his death, working with artist Paul Merritt to establish the business's textile and color section. The business increased the manufacture and sales of the Dauphine further internationally, especially in North America and Africa. The Dauphine had good early sales in the US, but it eventually fell behind against more competition, including newly developed domestic compacts like the Chevrolet Corvair. Additionally, Renault offered the Floride, also known as the Renault Caravelle Roadster, outside of North America. In the end, it was determined that the company's state ownership was detrimental. Plans to offer shares to the general public were formally disclosed in 1994. In 1996, the business was privatized. With its newfound freedom, the business was able to expand into South and Eastern European markets once more, opening a factory in Brazil and making improvements to its infrastructure in Argentina and Turkey. With the second generation traffic, codenamed X83, General Motors, Europe and Renault started working together to produce LCVs in December 1996. Due to declining sales and the COVID-19 pandemic, Renault unveiled a cost-cutting plan in May 2020 that called for the elimination of 15,000 positions worldwide, or nearly 10% of the company's workforce. As part of a corporate restructuring effort, Renault announced in January 2021 that it will separate its automotive division into the following four business units, Renault, Dacia, and Lada, Alpine, and Mobilize. Renault introduced its SUV Kiger on February 15, 2021, in India. That's the end of the video. Share your views in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Car History.